Welcome to The Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together, we are The The Traveling Traveling Professors. Professors. In today's show, Sherry and I are going to take you on a tour of the Troncaville's castle. That's the fortress inside Carcassonne. Now, I told you in a previous show that we did not visit the castle because most of it, most of the interior of it, the museum and the other buildings were closed, as was the Roman side of the ramparts. And that is true. So how in the world can we show you pictures of the inside? Well, that's because it was completely open when we were there before, which was 2016. What wasn't open in 2016 was the rampart walls that we've just previously done a show on. So we have plenty of pictures of the fortress itself. Well, here's our trusty map again. So this is what we're going to be studying today. We're going to be walking through this area right here, which is the main fortress. It doesn't reach this stage until the 1200s to the 1400s. This was originally a Gallic site, and then the Romans took it over. So the Roman area would have run from approximately right here to right here. Then later on, it was expanded outward, and then when the kings of France take it over, then they will add this heavy curtain wall on the inside and also beef up the main gate. Let's see how that gradually takes place. In the 1130s, this is when the first manor house is put in, and it's basically just put up against the Roman wall in the back. Very simple. This is 1130. Now, the Trunk of Veals began their ownership of this property around 1067. And they held it until 1209, when, during the Albigensian Crusade, a Raymond Troncaville was forced to surrender the city to Simon de Montfort and his crusading forces. Then it remained out of the family and the Montfort family from 1209 to 1218. After the death of Simon de Montfort, his son gave it to King Louis VIII. And then it remained loosely in royal hands until a few years later when a descendant of Raymond Troncaville, another Raymond Troncaville, uh, laid siege and laid claim to the area again. He kept it until 1247, and at that time it was then given over to King Louis IX, St. Louis, and it remained then in royal hands, although it would be given to different people to control, but because of its location, it was extremely important to be maintained as a seneschal. And one of the reasons that the king really upgraded the fortress, and that is, you see here from 1250, 1400, is because the people disliked them, the people so much that were running the area that they had increased their defensive capabilities, if, literally turning it into a citadel. So, as I said before, Here is when the the first of the manor houses was constructed. Then in 1150, they construct a chapel on the side. And then we get to the 1190s, and then we add a keep, and then increase some of the other buildings in the region, and it becomes what is known as a plateum, a large manor house that's very unusual for this time. And then in 1210, you have the Pinse Tower, which is, you see it a little bit of it in different stages. But this is when the Pinse Tower reaches its height. And this is a significant event because this really indicates the power of the individual here. If you were to go to Italy and look at Italian towns, you would see that every family built their own defensive tower. The higher it was, the more important they were. And then when you get to 1250, that's when it's transformed into a fortress. Here's a nice aerial shot of the Troncaville Castle from the back side. So here is the area where you have the back of the castle. There's the Pinty Tower. This is the entrance gate. And then the rest of it you have your towers. Then you have the Barbican out here in front. So now we will go in and start taking a little walk. The first evening that Sherry and I were in Carcassonne, of course, I'm just, I'm ready to go right into the castle right away, but we're just going to walk around. So we walked up to where the Trunk of Eel Castle was, and they had a spot which was a viewing area. So you could stand here and you could look at the bridge that leads from the Barbican entrance into the main gate. And then you have this dry moat, but it's just kind of a space. It's not designed to have any water in it. But I would imagine that it would have had a wall at the end. But you see, they've got a little medieval garden down below. So then we walked down past the entrance, went around the other side. Well, it's open on the other side. You could just go right in. So here's the one wall. You can see the turrets, and then you see the outer wall. And there's one of the entrances. You turn, and then here's your view back towards the bridge. And there wasn't any, it was closed for the evening. 
I would assume they'd have people here to make sure you could you, you paid your ticket, but I don't think you could. He would need some scaling ladders in order to get up the bridge. So we walk down, and you see along the side here hoarding. This is what you would have found on many castles: these wooden outer works. We would have bowmen and other people on the inside of them, and they could drop rocks down on you. They can shoot arrows at you with with some protection. Then you move a little further on, and here's the hoarding around the tower. And there's another lion hoarding on the other side. So it gives you the idea of what it looked like. And we'll eventually get up there to see what it was like to be in it. Now, of course, one of the interesting things about besieging walls is perspective. From the ground, that looks like a long way up. From up there, it looks like you're really close. So we move on down. And then here's the little area where they've got the medieval garden. And Cherry being the flower person knew most of the plants. And so we walked around there took a shot back and you can see where the hoarding ends and then you just have the regular crenellated towers which is actually underneath the hoarding and then I walk we walked all the way to the end so you get a nice shot of the various vegetables and things being grown here and then the bridge on the other side this is where you would then get your tickets but it's called the Barbican and it's easier to talk about that when we're up on the walls looking back down at it but now when we were back here in 2021 uh, the, the the garden was never planted that, that was all removed it was uh, just regular earth and the, and grass so i guess they didn't plant the so let's go around get our ticket and go in here's the entrance to the troncaville castle the ticket section in medieval times the barbican now when we were there this last time 2021 covid time this gate was open. Over here on the right-hand side were people who did not have tickets. The other side, there was a gentleman there and a, and a lady. If you had ordered your tickets online and they were timed, you could go in and show them your passport, that you had your shots and everything, and they would just let you in. They did have people down at the end of the line to let you know that that's where you should go. I know it's one of the things that anytime you have a ticket, it lets you skip the line. It's hard to do that, but they usually have people out for that purpose. Now, when we were there in 2016, obviously there's no COVID. We just simply went in and took a right and went through this ticket area where you bought your tickets and you picked up pamphlets and you could get your audio tour and what have you. And then when you came out, you see the backside of the entrance in this half moon shaped barbican. And they had bathrooms and other things there. And then we got ready to go into the castle. And we found a nice couple who took our picture. And so here we are in front of the Castle de Troncaville. And now we're going to cross the bridge. It's not a drawbridge. It was never a drawbridge. And then we get to the main gate. Now the main gate had a portcullis. And they do close the doors and lock them at night when they're... Now we are inside in the main courtyard. Directly ahead of us at what was known in the Middle Ages as the dungeon. The donjon. It's now part of the museum complex. And then turning to our right, there is the rest of the courtyard area. We're going to walk down this wall to the end and then turn to look at the La Chapelle area. The La Chapelle, the church, the little chapel, was wedged in front of this tower and then came out and had a semicircular end where the altar would have been located. You can tell where the chapel was because if you walk out onto this flat space and look down, you see that they have put a line in the rock showing the outline of where the church was located. If you go all the way to the front of where the church would have been located standing in front of that tower and look back, here's the back side of the wall with the hoarding. So you can see how different it looks from the back because you have to be able to walk from one tower to the other. You do have to hunch over a little bit. I would imagine that in the Middle Ages they wouldn't have had to have done that. And looking to the right, there is the entrance into the courtyard from across the bridge. So this is the double tower, the gatehouse. Now, the next part of our tour, we are going to be dealing with what is known as the South Courtyard, and then that will take us around to the front of the castle. And we can So we have to go into the door in front of the dungeon, and there you come to this gigantic model of Carcassonne. Now, there were so many people around it when we were there, it was easier to go up and take a picture from above. So you can see kind of the topographical lay of the land. Then you come out onto the wall in the back, and this is looking into what is known as the South Courtyard. This is what remains of the old building, which was destroyed in the late tree, late 1400s, probably in a fire. 
and you can see where the second floor was. Here's the beam points, and then there's a window, and there's all sorts of other stuff. So there would have been a second floor here. Uh, they did, later on in the 60s, do a little reconstruction here, and then put a uh, walkway across the top of it so you could continue all the way around. So this is looking one direction in the south courtyard. There is the beautiful viewing area over here. And then if you turn around from where we're looking this direction, turn the other direction, there's the St. Guimard's Church on the other side. As you get to the corner, here's the view of the wall fortifications heading towards the Oud Gate. And then here's looking back to the wall that was retained that wasn't destroyed in the Great Fire and they were able to fix it up. So we now go down this gallery till we get to the other end. And there is our view. That building is the Church of San Nazaire with the Bishop's Palace in front of it, which is the Hotel de la Cité of Carcassonne. And then we get to the edge of the corner and we have to go around the turret and come out the other side. And then this shows you what we're heading to, which is the gate tower. But then once again, we're still in the south courtyard. Here's looking at it from the other direction. And then here's looking up at what is called the Pinthi Tower, which was originally a Roman tower and then gradually added on to until by the 1200s it was full size, which would have towered over the whole area. After leaving the south courtyard, time to head into the, the gate towers. And here's a view out of the gate tower looking at what I've mentioned on several occasions, the Barbican, the semicircular area with the main gate in the front. Now what these barbicans are frequently used for is you can fight and hold people off and then withdraw back into the castle if you have to and then periodically launch assaults across the bridge. But if you can hang on to the barbican, you can amass your cavalry or your infantry or whatever you want to do in this area and then throw open the gate and it's a surprise and then everybody charges out. Well, on the other side of that gate, the road and the town go straight down to the main entrance. So once you shove these people back, they're going to tumble down the this, this street, and then you can run over them. Here's a schematic drawing of the whole area. There's several of them actually in the wall defenses around the city as well. Here's a schematic of the Twin Tower that were in the Gate Tower, which, of course, above the entrance, there are murder holes, so you can drop rocks down, shoot arrows at them, throw spears down, or boiling oil if you want to. And then here's what the arrow loops look like, and, of course, a nice view of the ceiling structure with the huge beams. But, of course, the other thing that you have is once you walk out of this tower, now you're going to walk into the hoarding that defends the other section of the wall. Now, as we leave the tower, we step down under the wooden hoarding. This is the area where you would walk from one area to the other. And then if you turn, here is what one of the hoarding stations would look like. There are little places to sit. Uh, you can see down below you, you can see off to the side, the uh, lower areas for you to shoot or throw rocks down on people. This juts out over the wall, so this gives you a good shot at people who are attempting to put scaling ladders up. It would also mean that in order for them to put a scaling ladder, they're going to have to put it on the front of this, which gives you options to push them away without necessarily having to come in contact with the soldiers climbing up. And then there's areas where you can stick spears, you can shoot arrows. And of course, I'm at the right at the edge, so you can see the angle shot that you have of people who are trying to come across the bridge. And then here's a schematic showing some people stand up, some people sit down. You can have crossbows, whatever you, what you want. Here's the people bringing more ammunition up then this is looking as we walk across because when you walk across we then come to an, a tower if you remember looking at it from below and so here's the schematic showing the tower so we've come across this one set of hoarding then we go up and then this is what it looks like again from the ground they're the same around the tower they're just individual spaces and then here's a view where you can look out over the top from the one down into the next section and then we walk across that next section of hoarding and uh, they really don't want you down in there. They've got it kind of blocked off so people don't get hurt. And then here's a view at the corner once we get ready to make a turn to head back towards the main building. It shows the rest of the town, and that's the Trezor Tower, the Treasure Tower, directly ahead. At the corner turret, you get a nice view of the town right there in front of the Troncaville Castle. And then you can see in the background the Roman Wall. This would be the Gallo-Roman wall. And here's a schematic. So we're right here in this particular tower, and we're heading back this direction. And I, would, I thought that we would be equal in, in height, but we aren't. We're actually almost a whole story up. That rampart tour, which runs from this corner all the way this direction, you have to 
access it at a different spot. There are actually two trips here you have to use. If you get on the rampart and you go all the way to the end, there's an exit down and then you're in the city. If you exit down, well, then you can't through, go through the rest of the castle. So we're going through the castle first, and then we'll go back out through the ramparts and then finish. So here's a view out of one of the crenellations looking at the Roman wall. And then here's the exit from one tower into the next section of the, of the wall. And there's a nice view as it comes close to connecting with the corner of the trunk of Veal Castle. And where it connects is at what is called the Tower of the Chapel. And here's the tower of the chapel. So we're going to go in here at the top. Then we'll have to go all the way down. And that takes us into the museum. Then you leave the museum, go back into the tower, but get off at the second floor and take the walk out on the ramparts. Now when you get into the chapel tower, here's the view down. And you see the Church of St. Guimer. And then you see the Bastide, or the Barbican, right in here. And originally, this is what it was supposed to look like. We'd come down from the castle in this big circle area which was protecting this region along in here and then it's time to go downstairs into the museum from the top of the chapel tower you go down to the base three flights down and you end up in the archaeological museum now since 1961 the west wing of the castle has housed the museum for particularly beautiful or historic objects that came from carcassonne the bastide and the area around carcassonne here is the original lady carcass the ones that i showed you in the in the last show as a as a reconstruction so that's the original old lady carcass and then here we have these beautiful Beautiful carvings showing scenes from the Passion of Christ. Carvings that is the resurrection. So there's a lot of religious art in here. There's also some Gallo-Roman art as well and some military stuff. Right, here's a beautiful set of windows that was moved into the... And then there's a whole section of projectiles for catapults and trebuchets in one of the corners of the, uh, of the museum. And here I am kneeling next to one. And here is two beautiful statues of the Virgin Mary. The one on the left is extremely old because you look at the quality of the baby Jesus in her hand. And then you see the masterpiece of the mother and child. And then there's a close-up view of them. Very 12th century, 13th century style. And then you go into one room where they have some of the original paintings on the wall and you have this magnificent double-sided cross from the late 15th century crucifixion on one side and Mary and the child on the back side. On the front side base on the left Pilate is holding up Christ's cape and presents him to the Jews as ek homo, behold the man. On the right side the Jews who are particularly evil looking are shouting tole tole crucifix unum, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And in the back you have the virgin kneeling holding an open book Ec ancilia domine, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. And an angel is on the other side, carrying a phylactery, bearing the words, Ave Maria Gracia, Hail Mary, full of grace. Here's an example of the what's left of the original wall painting that was in this particular room. And then we come to the Abolution Fountain, decorated with marble foliage and mascaroons. It's from the second half of the 12th century. It's from the Abbey of La Gresse in Fontfroid. And then we have some a section where we have some old tombstones. And there are several sarcophagi that are in the museum. Here's one of them with this beautiful carving off to the side. And then we have a typical uh, medieval knight's tomb sarcophagus with a carved knight on the top of it. And this part was closed in 2021 for renovation. It'll be really interesting to see how they reorganize it when, when they open it up again. It may require another trip. I know there's a detailed version of this rampart walk on the Roman section, but I'm going to give you a really quick one just so I feel like you got your money's worth. So here's our map. We're going to take a brief walk on this Roman section right along here from the end of the Troncaville Castle to the Treasure Tower. And then again, here's the schematic showing the chapel tower that we have to come back up from downstairs to get on to this Roman ramparts. And you say, well, how do you know they're Roman? Well, they reconstructed them in the same style that the Romans had with this rectangular look to them. So once you come out on the second level of the tower, the church tower, here's where you come out onto the wall. 
And then here's the view back, and you can see the trunk of Eel Castle. You can see where the hoarding tower is. And then looking ahead, there's the one of the Roman towers. They're all like this. They've reconstructed a couple of them on the other section to look like this, but there I don't believe there are any Roman towers on that side at all. And then as you wander around the side, as you come around the, the wall section, you see other parts of the city. You can see that when the French kings added the big inner wall, where the old Roman wall used to be, so they've, they found the excavation site where the tower and the wall sections were. And you can see that they appear in the front to have towers closer together. Then once you get to the final corner, there's the, that's the main gate that's up ahead. When you get to the edge of it, you can see just the, right here the set of stairs that goes down. And then there's the set of stairs and you walk down and you're right in the middle of the entrance of the city. Thing. So if you want to see this section of the wall in more detail, then look up the, the old show. The old show is entitled Carcassonne Attacker's View and the North Side Ramparts. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packett and please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I've been doing podcasting on history for over 15 years. I've got over 4,000 shows, and I've done CDs, which, of course, can be sent out as USBs. So if you would really like to get more on history for free, then come by my website, as you see here, historyaccordingtobob.com, and see what's there. So thank you very much again.